So in this lecture, we're going to examine the interaction between the atomic orbitals of Lewis acids and Lewis bases. So let's begin by defining what a Lewis acid and Lewis base is. Lewis acids are molecules containing an empty, unfilled atomic orbital. And Lewis bases are molecules containing a pair of electrons or a filled orbital. So let's look at a Lewis acid. So this is one example of a Lewis acid. It's a methyl cation. This methyl cation has three sp2 hybridized covalent bonds between the C and the H's and it has an empty pure 2p orbital given here. So it has a positive charge. So here's an example of a Lewis base. Once again a Lewis base is a molecule containing a pair of electrons a pair of non-bonding electrons in an orbital. So hydride is an example of a Lewis base be because it has two electrons, a pair of non-bonding electrons within the 1s orbital. Now when a Lewis acid reacts with a Lewis base, that basically means their atomic orbitals interact, they overlap, producing a bond. So in this case, when this Lewis acid interacts with this Lewis base, this 1s interacts with this 2p, the, these two electrons are donated to this 2p orbital. Now as these come closer, this lobe becomes smaller, this becomes larger, so that the overlap is better, and we form sp3 hybridized bonds. So one, two, three, four sp3 hybridized bonds and now this carbon and this H share a pair of electrons. So let's look at the energy diagram of our interaction of our two lowest acids and bases. So once again our 1s is lowering energy than the 2p. And that's because this is closer to our nucleus than this orbital is. And so this guy will be found lower on the energy level, so the y-axis is the energy. This will be lower than our 2p orbital. So the two electrons will come directly from the 1s, from the hydride, and when they interact, they will form, form a bonding molecular orbital and an anti-bonding molecular orbital. The two electrons will go into the bonding molecular orbital, forming our sp3 hybridized molecular orbitals. So, so now let's define what a Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base is. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is a molecule that donates an H ion, while a Bronsted-Lowry base is a molecule that accepts an H ion. So, acid strength of a Bronsted-Lowry acid increases with increasing S character. So why is that? Well to examine that let's recall one simple concept. So here we have a proton, so we have a nucleus and protons inside that nucleus and this is our 1s orbital, our 2s orbital and the, two, and the 2p orbital. So recall that as our electron gets closer and closer to our protons in the nucleus the energy level of the entire atom decreases so it becomes more stable. So the closer our electron is to our nucleus, the more stable that atom is. And let's look what happens when an acid, a Bronsted-Lowry acid, reacts. So when a Bronsted-Lowry acid reacts, it creates a conjugate base, so a Bronsted-Lowry base, and it creates an H ion. Now if this has a lot of S character that means the electron pair here will be found in that S character. So the more S character we have the closer our electrons are to our nucleus and the more stable our conjugate base is. And if we have a stable conjugate base that means our acid will be more likely to form this conjugate base and therefore our acid will be more likely to dissociate and that means our acid will be a stronger acid. So therefore the more S character a bronsted acid has the stronger the base it produces and that means the better that acid. 